Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with yet another paddling tip. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the draw stroke. Now, the forward stroke and the sweep stroke uh, are definitely the most important strokes to learn. But the draw stroke is a really handy stroke to know because what the draw stroke does is it lets you move your kayak sideways or laterally through the water. And that's incredibly handy for maneuvering around the water, especially when you want to pull yourself up next to somebody or up next to a dock or just up to shore so you can get out of the water. It just is a really handy stroke. And so we're going to dive right into it, look at a few different types of draw strokes, starting with the most basic draw stroke. Before we get into it though, I first need to thank the sponsor of this video, which is the Hurricane and the Tampico 130. This is a new kayak this year, and I actually did an awesome test of this kayak, a three-day kayak camping trip across the Okefenokee Swamp. It was a trip of a lifetime, and it really was a perfect way to test this kayak. It's a kayak that really marries stability with performance, and it's manufactured by thermoforming, and thermoforming allows the kayak to be 25% roughly lighter than similar kayaks that are manufactured in, in uh, by rotomolding a different way, the, tr the normal way of making kayaks. And that, that weight savings is, it's just awesome. It's awesome for moving it around, but it's awesome for paddling this boat too. So anyway, I did a full unbiased review of this kayak. Yes, I can tell you I liked this kayak. I had a really great time in it, but is it the right kayak for you? That's a different question. You can watch the full unbiased review. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Let's get right into it. The draw stroke. So the basic draw stroke, it really just involves reaching out to the side of your kayak at around the hip, planting the blade fully in the water, and then pulling your boat and body towards that paddle blade. For the most effective stroke, rotate your head and upper body to face your active blade. Plant your blade completely in the water and get your paddle shaft as vertical as possible. Getting your paddle shaft vertical really involves pushing that top hand right across your kayak. And this can put you in a bit of an unstable position. So if you're not comfortable doing that, Bring that top hand a bit lower in front of the face to start and gradually with more co comfort and confidence, you can work that blade or that top hand higher up. With your blade completely in the water, you'll pull your lower hand in towards your hip. Your top hand should stay pretty stationary through these motions, acting as a pivot for the stroke. Now, before the blade actually reaches the side of your kayak, you wanna stop and slice it out towards the back of the boat. If you let that blade, come right against the kayak, you can get a little tippy. Now a common problem people have with the draw stroke is instead of the kayak moving laterally, the kayak ends up turning <laughs> one way or the other instead. And, and that's because every kayak has a t draws differently. If you find the bow is getting pulled, is turning too much, it probably means you're pulling too far towards the front of the kayak. If the stern is turning is getting pulled too much towards the paddle well you're pulling too far back you find a, you'll have to find that happy medium and the hip is a good starting point so that's the most basic of the draw stroke techniques and the, the next step up is the knifing draw or the t-stroke it's sometimes called and the idea of the t-stroke is that once the blade gets close to the kayak instead of slicing it out to the back of the boat, what I'll do is I'll curl my wrist forward and I'm spinning the blade 90 degrees so that I can slice it back to where it started and take another stroke. And the benefit of doing this is that I'm in control of the kayak the whole time and I can make strokes a lot quicker. The next evolution of the draw stroke is something called the sculling draw stroke. And this is, this is a draw stroke that I use all the time. It's not just a draw stroke I use all the time, it's a stroke I use all the time because it's such a nice, it just lets you fine tune your position within the water. The idea of the sculling draw strokes, well, it starts the very much the same way as the basic draw. I'm gonna turn my head and body to face the active blade. I'm gonna get that blade fully engaged in the water with my paddle shaft as vertical as I can, because that's what allows me to, to apply the most lateral pressure uh, with my paddle. But the difference here is the motion 
of the paddle in the water. Instead of just drawing the paddle towards my hip, I'm going to use a sculling motion to apply steady and even pressure on the paddle. And this bypasses the whole recovery phase that the basic draw and the knifing draw dealt with. The key to the sculling draw is the motion of the blade through the water. And uh, the blade moves forward and backward alongside your kayak and a pretty short path alongside your kayak, about two feet out to the side of your kayak. And I'll do this with my paddle pretty horizontal so you can see my blade. The trick here is that the leading edge of the blade needs to be higher than the, the trailing edge. So as I'm pushing forward, I'm gonna cock my wrist back a little and then when I pull back, I'm gonna curl my wrist, curl my wrist to, uh, as I pull back. Think of it as uh, buttering bread. When you're spreading butter on the bread, if your knife doesn't have a climbing angle on it, it's just gonna dig into the bread. That doesn't work. That leaning edge of the knife has to be higher than the trailing edge. And that's what keeps it on the, uh, he keeps the keeps it from digging into the bread and that's the exact same thing with your paddle blade your paddle blade the leading edge has to be higher than the trailing edge and once you get used to that motion and you do that vertically that applies steady pressure on the power face of your paddle which is the side of the paddle that you take a forward stroke with and that draws your kayak sideways now a couple little things that are worth mentioning. First of all, the angle change is very subtle. If you change the angle too much, you're effectively just doing forward and backward strokes in the water. They have to be subtle changes to keep that climbing angle on your, on your paddle. The second thing is that this paddle motion is driven not by your arms, but by your core. And you, the way you do that is by turning your upper body and with my upper body turned like this, my top hand is actually staying in a relatively fixed position and I'm moving my paddle by rotating my upper body. My arms are really just responsible for changing the angle of the paddle blade in the water. And the reason for that is very simple. My torso muscles are way stronger, way more powerful than my arms and so that's what you want to use. So I think you could probably tell the sculling draw is definitely an effective way to move the kayak laterally through the water, but it goes beyond that. Uh, by learning the sculling draw, you're really developing your paddle dexterity. You're developing a better understanding of how slight motions or movements and changes of your blade angle in the water impact your boat. And that comes into play in so many different ways as you progress as a paddler. And so I would highly recommend taking the time to learn the sculling draw, the sculling motion, even if you really don't care about moving sideways uh, uh, the most efficiently, because it really does have an incredible uh, ripple effect on developing your paddling skill. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tip and hopefully you put it into practice very soon. Uh, if you have anything to add, please leave a comment down below. Uh, if you don't agree with anything I said, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and stay tuned because we do have lots more tips, gear reviews, and paddling adventures coming your way.